the big day for this team. Tommy Baldwin Jr. and Doug Kobe would like nothing better than to take down this victory. Doug Kobe said earlier, he said, you know what, I need a car that is stable and smooth. When I go back under the green flag and we get this race underway, that's what he's looking for as he rolls out of the sixth position. But this isn't a racetrack that he's had a ton of success at, and he's got very limited starts here at Richmond Raceway, but he's off to a good start with qualifying. Ben, let's take a look at the race analysis for his event. 150 laps in the Virginia is for racing lovers, 150. There'll be three pit stops that these cars can take today. One will be for fuel. They'll have six changed tires on pit road. They will do two pit stops with three tires each as the race goes on a three-quarter mile d-shaped oval 75 degrees today partly cloudy here in richmond virginia and it is going to be a barn burner for sure some oh. of the keys to the race today tires 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 is the name of the game got to have a good rhythm to your laps here in richmond and you want to make sure that your car is strong and powerful at the exit of turn four, because that is where you can carry a lot of speed and make some ground passing cars. Oh, Joe, all of a sudden we've already got a problem. It is the number 82, the Danny Watts owned car for Craig Lutz. It's an LFR car and the Horton Avenue Materials car. We saw some smoke coming off the left rear, and as you look real close at it, if you can get a shot at it, but right now it's time to go racing as the field is ready, and there you can see the 82 looking to head to pit row. As they head off turn number four, we are green and racing at Richmond, modified style. For the first time in his career, Austin Beers leads the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour into turn number one. He'll take sole possession of the race lead. The battle is on now for second. This Justin Bunsenior to the outside. Patrick Emerling trying to make a move to the bottom. No question about it. Meanwhile, Narducci is stuck in the upper groove. Car number three, it drifts back to about the fifth position holding on there, but a strong point at the front of the field. It is still Austin Beers in command of the event. No surprises there. Look a little further back in the field. They're side by side, Joe, and doubled up, but the outside lane seems to be the quickest way. That's Bobby Labonte who was working the outside of Andrew Krause up front once again. Here is Tommy Catalano. Catalano had a great race here last year, was 11 laps away from getting his first NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour victory. Justin Bonsignor won the race, but Catalano back up front again. He challenges for third to the inside of Patrick Emerling. They're kind of neighbors from the same region of the country, upstate New York. He makes the move to the inside. In practice, he had a car that was evil, Catalano, but he was able to make adjustments. He surprised everybody with a great run in time trial. Now they set kind of single file. Doug Colby setting back in the sixth spot. Labonte is moving forward with that number 38 car, Joe, and Andrew Krause is now among the top eight. Nardu There's the battle. Narducci here on the move. He looks to the inside of Emerling as they come across the line. Now, with the NASCAR Xfinity Series cars on track beforehand, many of the teams thought that the first 20 to 25 laps with this Hoosier rubber would be a little bit skatey, a little bit loose out on the track. So the driver's adapting to that. Narducci now trying to move back forward. This is a battle for the fourth spot. To the inside, and the number three is Narducci. Emerling, who just got out of his NASCAR Xfinity Series car, falls back to fifth. While he does that, it is Doug Colby who tries to make the same move. The six-time champion puts the Mayhew Tools car to the inside. Three cars contending for position number four. Narducci is there now, but for how long? Inside, going, going, gone. Here comes Kobe. He now picks up a spot. Boy, off turn two that time. Brian Narducci used up Patrick Emerling. Emerling had a roll out of the throttle. Narducci's car slid up the racetrack. Emerling... Gave him room to get in there, but that was a pretty tight moment there for Brian Narducci in the three. So Doug Kobe now up to fifth. Now here comes Bobby Labonte. Labonte in the number 38 machine, the neon numerals, yellow car, running back there in the eighth position. He's trying to make his way forward as well. Here he comes looking down to the inside into turn one. And he makes a nice bid for it with a great charge there. Will he be able to complete the mission? Now looking, here it is on the outside. Good move there. He clears, takes over the spot, but right there contending as well and looking right to the inside to try to take back that position. It is a strong battle and Ronnie Silk. Now he's a gentleman that won the first stop and he has Phil Moran creating the magic of that race car and it is magical as usual. Now Moran has strategy. He's been here before and he's done it with Doug Colby. Will that strategy work for Ronnie Silk? 
he's coming to the front, Joe. Well, Ronnie Silk's a driver that is very good on long run races. When you think of tire management, when you think of drivers that are good on large racetracks, he's always run very well at the mile, the magic mile up at Loudoun, New Hampshire. So you'd expect Ronnie Silk to be good here, but the statistics don't show that. He was 19th here in 2021. Got a top 10 here last year. This is not his strongest track, but he looks good today. He certainly does. And remember, he is the 2011 NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour champion. That car, the Blue Mountain Machine, future homes car, has been very consistent and very stable. This guy's got so much talent. We talked about it. And he knows how to save and manage tires as well. Now, last year, he was driving for the Stewart family in their race car. Good news that uh, one of the owners, Kenny Stewart, and Kevin Stewart had some health issues. They're doing good, and they're watching their favorite driver, and you know who that is. Absolutely, and he has done a really nice job over the years with that team, so we'll keep an eye on that. Here is uh, Brian Narducci, and Narducci looks in the rearview mirror, and he's got the 7 New York of Doug Kobe. Now, interestingly enough, Brian Narducci in other series has driven the 7 New York car, works with Tommy Baldwin. Who did Narducci call for advice coming into this race? This guy. Tommy Baldwin, he, he right? He sure did. And, uh, you know, he is a two-time national champion. You talk about what some people would consider that physical handicap that you mentioned. It is not for this young man. He comes from a great racing family. His grandfather, Jerry Pearl, legendary championship driver. His uncle, Jeff Pearl, and, of course, other family members that are all part of this racing operation. His mother is one of those individuals that eats, sleeps, and enjoys modified racing to the max. Great run for this driver. No surprises at all whatsoever in the early laps of the event. Looking a little further back in the field. Now, there's our leader. It is Justin Beers. Austin Beers out in front. Austin We're Beers. 14 laps into the Virginias for Racing Lovers 150 at Richmond Raceway. Gary McDonald on pit road. McDonald, one of the independent runners. Uh, they are headed down on pit road, starting the event in 25th, the Lakeside Avenue landscaping car. And uh, it does not appear that they're in any quick hurry to get that car back out in the competition. Let's go back up front to our leader, Austin Beers, and there is the 64 car. And of course, very interesting combination. Ronnie Uhouse used to be the driver. He takes over as the crew chief. Sly Zabin, who was involved with the legendary uh, Flamingo Motorsports team, is involved with that team. And the flying our Irishman, Murphy, is the owner of the car. And uh, they are really pleased. Eric Beers is a champion in his own right. They are neighbors of the Hirschman family. Do you think they go over the fence and listen yeah. and to some of the stories? As a great person to listen to, caution is out on the racetrack. Our first caution of the day with 17 laps complete. There's a 20 car of Eddie McCarthy who's down on pit road. So 17 laps into the Virginias for Racing Lovers 150. And the caution flag is out here at Richmond Raceway. The crew trying to push that 20 car away for Eddie McCarthy. So far, it has been all Austin Beers out in front. And that is such a good story for Austin Beers and the entire gang to be able to have such a strong run in the early stages. He was so confident that they have had uh, throughout the race so far, the season that they've had to start with. Confidence goes such a long way for everybody when you're driving a race car, and that's true for Austin Beers. This kid is young, but when you talk to him, he actually acts way beyond his years. His dad, his grandfather were all involved. There is the Danny Watts race car, the 82, down on pit road of Craig Lutz. We noticed that the number 20 of Eddie McCarthy, they pushed it behind the wall. Talk about no luck at all for the McCarthy group. On their way to this race, their truck broke down and they had to rent a U-Haul to get here, but they still made it, and guess what? There is, well, not a good day at all for that team. Once again, is we see can now the field single file in formation. Catalano has uh, performed some magic and worked his way up to the second spot. You know, Tommy Catalano is also dipping into running a super late model these days as well. So that family is the FX Capera Catalano Motorsports Machine, Dave Troy, and Dave Catalano, the dad, 
does a lot of work there. And you can see that particular car. We've seen that car, Joe, come so close to winning so many times with that young man. But he's got the horseshoe under the seat today, he told me. Yeah. So today could be the day. Yeah, he was very, very good here last year. Came 11 laps away from winning his first Wheel and Modified Tour event. I was watching that car as he was making his way off turn number two. His car is stepping out sideways. You know he's really driving it pretty aggressive, and he's trying to keep the tires under him because that was one thing that hurt him in the late run last year, Tommy Catalano. Uh, he's always been good at big tracks like yes, this, too. This team has not been afraid to go forward and put some effort into testing. They actually went down to New Smyrna Speedway at the start of the season to test a whole new car and a whole new combination, but they have changed their approach this season, and so far in a couple of races, it has certainly panned out. Now, Ben, one thing that's pretty interesting here is we celebrate the 75th year of NASCAR, and Amazing. we highlighted it at the start of the show. There's a couple of very famous modifieds in the field, and one of them is a yellow V4 that's driven by Tim Conley. Now, for many, many years, we know that yellow V4 was always a Bob Garbarino-owned team. Yep, referred to as the Mystic Missile. The Mystic Missile, as always, right? And that number four car has so much history here in the sport of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, but it's back in modified competition for the first time since 2016. You know, the last time a driver set behind the wheel of that car when it was under the hands of Bob Garbarino, it was Jimmy Blewett. Blewett ran very strong with it. He had some great runs with it. It is a car that can get to the front. Remember, Conley is an athlete, very competitive. He was an outstanding football player in his younger days. So he goes to win. He doesn't play race for second or any of the above. Now, there is the Dan Lutz car back the, excuse me, the Craig Lutz car, the Danny Watts car, back behind the wall, car number 82. And there is the Conley number four, and we told that great story earlier today. Now, that V4 always came because you mentioned the Mystic Missile. Bob Garbarino was in the marina business. Yes, that V4, the Mystic River Marina. That's right. That V4 was a tribute to the Evan Rude Motors that he used to sell at his marina, and that is why it was always a legendary V4, the V4 Evan Rude engine. You talk about drivers that have driven for uh, the Garbarino coup. Oh, down on pit road, car number 60, Matt Hirschman is in, in the elite towing Baker racing car. It looks like they're putting on fuels, and it looks like perhaps a rubber adjustment up front they're working the steering from side to side so this is typical matt hirschman right didn't have a lot of practice got 17 green flag laps out into the racetrack making a little bit of adjustment he did the same thing at new smyrna when the car wasn't right but notice he took some fuel that might be enough for them to get to the finish but he's playing a strategy game from the drop of the green flag he had nothing to lose running at the back of the field he had gotten up to 23rd or so on the racetrack he now has the ability to get some adjustments and work his way up through the field. A lot of pit stops still left to go, and Matt Hirschman is one of the best at being prepared for any situation, whether he's raced here or not. Well, we've talked about it so many times. He has that book. He calls it the Bible. He looks through it. He writes down. He documents everything. He is a thinker. When he is working on his race car or watching cars run, he studies every little detail to get the job done. And he has patience. And patience is something that you need here at Richmond. Well, while we have a moment here, 128 laps to go in the Virginias for Racing Lovers. 150 at the Richmond Raceway. We'll be back momentarily with more of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour from Richmond. 